Jackie Slater, Matthew Slater, for those who may not be aware around the globe, uh, there are just a handful of father and son tandems who have played in the Super Bowl and indeed even in the National Football League. Hall of Famer Jackie Slater and his son Matthew in that rare air. Jackie with the Los Angeles Rams, he played in Super Bowl fourteen. And this is the ultimate game for those who may not be thoroughly familiar. And his son Matthew has gone on and been blessed to play in five Super Bowls with the New England Patriots. They are also, again, uh, one of the uh, the only father and son team to have received the Bart Star Award. And they join us now. Matthew, so let me start with you first. A bit of a revival year. We know there are fans all around the globe. Many thought that the Patriots might have a long road back up to the top. You guys have gotten there in pretty quick fashion. I know Coach Belichick would say we haven't accomplished a thing, but talk about what you guys have done in turning that program around. Yeah, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun this year. Certainly the year that we had last year was very trying. It was a challenging year, um, a year of adjustment and refinding ourselves. But this year – Started off a little bit rough, but we found a way to put things together. And I think you really attribute that to the high character guys that we have in our locker room. Uh, we really enjoy being around one another. We enjoy the process. We enjoy working hard. And it's been great to get some results. Uh, it, there's nothing like winning as a team and accomplishing goals as a team. And we've been able to do that. And hopefully we can keep it going. There's no question in your all too well about that, Jackie, as I mentioned, having played in Super Bowl fourteen, Your son talked about high character uh, and integrity guys as well. Anything similar to that in your glory years with the team there in L.A., Jackie? Oh, without doubt. Um, you know, as you, as you mentioned, James, I played on several different teams, but only one of those teams went to the Super Bowl. Uh, went to several playoff games, played in 18 playoff games. And, and the thing that I remember most about uh, the teams that were the most successful that I played on was the fact that it, there was a brotherhood. And that brotherhood allowed for players as individuals to respect one another, to appreciate everyone's efforts all around you, and to make sure that you didn't let people down by not bringing your energy uh, to the party. And it's a very unique, um, you know, it might sound like, you know, that's what everyone does, but everyone doesn't do that. And every team that I played on wasn't that way. The teams that I played on that were that way, we were very successful. So it's a unique opportunity to, in, and it's enjoyable for those of us who are team oriented guys. Jackie, clearly a stellar career on your part, an anchor on that offensive line. I know my friend Howie Long, with whom I worked, has the highest degree of respect for you. But how unique was it to have guys who would influence the rest of the team with their togetherness, with their leadership? Because many people on the outside look, hey, you guys are a bunch of fun guys. You know, all you want to do is make a little money and do such and such. And I know better than that. But talk about the influence that you had on your teams in that regard. Well, James, for me, yeah, I was really kind of surprised as my career went on to find out just actually how much influence I had. Mm. And, you know, it wasn't from having a whole bunch to say uh, because I really didn't have a lot of speeches to make or anything like that. What I found from my teammates was that, that they appreciated the work that I put in. I practiced very hard. Uh, I tried to simulate the tempo I was going to see on Sundays. And un unfortunately, everybody wasn't uh, into putting that kind of effort into getting ready to play a football game. And so consequently, because I had the ability to consistently do that, then I was kind of thrust into a position of leadership. And uh, I thrived in that environment, just doing my job as hard as I can and and, um, you know, trying to be a leader in that regard. Matthew, you got a chance to see that firsthand as your father modeled that in the house. You have duplicated that in terms of a lengthy career as well and looking as fresh as a youngster. Uh, I don't know how your body is feeling, but talk about modeling what your dad talked about, maybe even more so 
than speaking it. Yes, certainly. Uh, <clears throat> I've, I've been very fortunate, my brother David and I, to have our father in our life for the entirety of our lives. And he's a man that's always lit, you know, lived his life by example and led by example. The same way he talked about leading in the locker room, he led at home by example. And to me, you know, I saw that it was really about what he did oftentimes more so than what he said. And I, under, I learned the importance of that at a young age that you can say a lot uh, but it's only talk unless you have some actual follow through with your actions. So, you know, as I think about my career or certainly most importantly, my family life, uh, what I try to do is lead with my example, with the way I'm living, uh, with transparency, with humility, and, and, and trying to do it with a, a servant-like heart all the while. So following my dad's recipe has uh, equaled success for me and Thankfully, he's modeling uh, modeling Christ, and and I've just followed in my dad's lead as he's followed in Christ's lead. You talk about modeling the lead of your dad. He, you were young when he retired, I believe, somewhere around the age of ten. Uh, what memories do you have of his career, and was it in your heart to want to follow in his footsteps out on the football field, or no? Well, I mean, I, I always tell people if my dad had been a uh, you know, anything else, I would have wanted to have done that. If he had been the manager of a mm. restaurant, I would have wanted to have been a manager of a restaurant. If he had been, you know, working at a gas station, I would have wanted to work at a gas station. So for me, it was really about doing what my dad did. And certainly his passion and love for the game was contagious, uh, especially for my brother and I. I mean, that's where it all started for us. Jackie, I have no idea what type of father you were as a, a sports father when you were watching Matthew play uh, as a youngster when he was in high school and college. Was it difficult for you to restrain yourself in terms of giving him maybe football advice, but not necessarily life advice? Well, he, he, he was kind of attracted to the sport early on, uh, football, and I just didn't think he was going to be big enough or all of that, you know, and certainly, you know, in his size, you know, I couldn't help him because I didn't know very much about what the little guys did. So I did everything I could to discourage it, you know, baseball, basketball, <laughs> he's track, everything we, everything I could think, soccer, everything I could think of. But he came back and he said, Dad, when, you told me when I got to high school, I still wanted to play, that I could play. And, I, and I had, that's what I had said. So my efforts to discourage him all failed. So when he went out for the team, uh, the only thing I could do was have somebody that I knew to come alongside of him, Leroy Irvin and Ryan Brown, Olympic gold medalist. They both worked with him and talked to him about his speed and about his uh, all these different things. And and the one thing that uh, I, that I noticed uh, and the guys would tell me is that, uh, you know, uh, Jackie, I, I only got a you know an hour and fifteen minutes here and there when I could come on the schedule and. He said, the problem is Matthew wants to stay longer. <laughs> so, so he had a passion to do this, do this sports. And, and uh, he, he wanted to be good at what, everything he did. He always put in great effort. Hey, Matthew, as I turn down the home stretch of this conversation here, I want to play off of what your dad just said. Was there ever that time where you felt being a church boy was perceived as being too soft? And what was the actual influence on you in having that foundation? Yeah, certainly. I, I think in the ultimate macho sport like football is, uh, people have sometimes seen my faith as a weakness. Uh, you know, they think I'm too nice. They think I care about things off the football field. Um, you know, like you said, soft and things of that nature. But that's a total misconception. I, I think being a Christian, especially in today's world, is very difficult. And it takes a lot of courage. It takes conviction. Uh, it takes humility. Uh, all those things that I think carry over to football. So for me, my faith has been foundational in, in my football career. The lessons I've learned through scripture and the disciplines of my faith have carried over into my, my football career. And it's been a perfect marriage. Uh, I think if you ask some players that my dad and I have played against over the years, they would say we're still pretty tough. 
I, you know, I, love, James, I would, James, I would just like to echo what Matthew said okay. briefly. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the toughest guys and the best football players that I played against were Christian men who loved the Lord. Wow. And wow. they were good because they paid attention to details. You know, mm -hmm. it would amaze me at how on different occasions, some of them would exploit my weaknesses. And I would think to myself, you had to have done a lot of film study to know that you could beat me there. And uh, ultimately those guys were, were the best. They, they, they prepared thoroughly. They looked at every angle, no stone was left unturned to figure out how to beat me or my team. And those were the toughest opponents that I ever had. Matthew, you won the Bart Starr Award uh, a few years ago. And because the Patriots were in the Super Bowl, you were not able to attend the entire Super Bowl breakfast. I was blessed to be there moderating that event. So your dad received it on your behalf. Tell us why winning the Bart Starr Award was so meaningful for you. Obviously, winning that award meant a great deal to me. Number one, because my dad won it. And uh, number two, just understanding what the award means. Um, being a man and a leader off the football field, trying to be a person of integrity, trying to treat people the right way, valuing relationships, uh, all the things that are, that are pillars of our faith as, as believers in Christ, uh, to be selected as someone who embodies those things is truly, truly humbling for me. So. It was a great honor, and I think of all the men who won it previously and, and since, and it's an honor to be mentioned alongside those guys as well. Jackie, you were there to receive the award on behalf of Matthew. You touched my heart as you were talking about your son and got choked up. What did that mean to you about Matthew receiving that award and you getting it on his behalf? Well, Jim, it, it, it meant a great deal it meant a really a, a lot because I, I had the pleasure of meeting Bart Starr and talking with him over the years. And um, everything that he stood for and wanted that award to stand, stand for, I always admired. I, I never really envisioned myself being the recipient of such an award. I always looked at my flaws and I always thought, yeah, you know, they can get somebody better than they did year after year. And when the when I finally got the got the award, I can't honestly say that I coveted it and really desperately wanted it. Fast forward it to Matthew receiving the award and me accepting it on his behalf. I thought of how he had worked. I thought of how there had been doubters along the way. I thought of how he had kept his faith in Christ alive. What a nice way to to tell a young man that he's doing things right and that all of the things that he's been doing all of his life uh, has given him the opportunity to to be in this position so that he can receive this award he's being honored for and and it's you know just it was a very emotional moment for me to think that my son uh, who uh, you know I can remember some things that he did when he was three years old that would make you think he's never, <laughs> he's never <laughs> gone. To, <laughs> what in the world is I have going on here? And I right. can remember those things. And then just to think of the young man that God has grown him to be. And I, I think of all those things and I just thank God, you know, for the fact that uh, he would be honored that way. And I trust and hope that it will encourage him to continue to be that type of a person. So, let me ask you first, Matthew, advice that you would give to see young people in a very divided society that we have right now who may have lost their way. Talk about the relationship with your father, that which you've gleaned from him that has had you on the right track that you would pass along to them. There's so much that I've gleaned from the relationship with my father. It's hard to really pick out uh, one or two things, but I, two things that I like to highlight and you know, we all have families of origin that we come from, and we don't pick those families. Um, some of us come from more traumatic experiences. Some of us have had a positive experience in our home. And I think when we talk about leadership and impacting the world and leaving our mark, that's important that we realize that that starts at home. It starts with the family. And all of us have a chance to either continue 
trends or change trends. And if you came from a background you didn't like, you have a chance to blaze a new path with the help of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if you had a great example at home, you have a chance to continue that. And, and I, I think uh, a lot of the divide that we see and, and the things that exist could be eliminated if, if the home life uh, was better and the foundations that we were given early on in our lives were better. Uh, to that point, I'll say for me, identity is huge. The sooner you understand whose you are and what you are made for, uh, the more you can live a life with purpose and a sense of direction. I know for me as a Christian, understanding that I belong to Christ and that my purpose and my why begins and ends with him has helped me live a more purposeful life, a life with intentionality. Uh, and, and I've been able to have an impact in my small, small spheres. Wow. Final word from you, Jackie Slater, and uh, fatherly advice that you would offer, sir. Well, I, I mean, J James, it's, it's, it's such a humbling experience, as you know, to try to raise children, to come alongside a woman who is trying to raise her children the right way. It's a, it's, it's a humbling experience because, you know, many of us did not have the the perfect examples about how to go about doing that. And to have the expectation of of him have been a person that would have a positive impact in the world, in his sphere of influence, and to live a positive life, it, you, you know, you hope for that. And so I can tell you that I spent a lot of time on my knees and so did my wife, and we hope and pray, and it's been an answer to prayer for us. Uh, God is good. He forgives us of our sins, which I'd be the first to say that I am more more in need of forgiveness than anybody I've ever met. And I'm so thankful, though, that God has forgiven me and put me in a position where I can try to have a positive influence on the people's lives that I come in contact with now. And that's that's what it's all about for me, James. I mean, uh, a lot of success as an athlete, you know, all of that, but, you know, there are a whole lot of other people out there hurting and and I'm just thankful that God uses me on occasion to impact somebody's life. God bless you both and continue success. Hey, Matthew, send me a note later to let me know Jackie did get to the TV set to see the kickoff on time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, God bless you guys. Thank you. All right, James. Take care. Okay, love see you guys. Later, okay, okay love you guys. take care. Thanks, Pop.